Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be getting started in about two minutes, but if you wanted to speak, we do have the sign-up sheets, and I'm going to take people in the order in which they uh, they signed up. So if you were going to be speaking during the public comment period, you need to sign in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll call the uh, April the 1st uh, meeting of the uh, Town Council to order. The first order of business will be the Pledge of Allegiance uh, led by Vice Mayor Barbara McCray. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right. The next order of business is the uh, adoption of tonight's council agenda. I think we had a uh, someone that wanted to possibly move something on the agenda. Ms. Mashburn. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I would like to make a motion that we move the legal from item 7 up to uh, right before 6A. Um, I think it would expedite to keep everything together it would expedite the tonight's meeting okay so that is your motion to yes, it is. move an item up on the agenda is that a second I second all in favor any opposed well you, you forward I, I, I'm, oh. I'm fine with that. I just oh, okay. I don't want to I don't want people to to leave thinking right. we're trying to get them to leave after they say okay that so it. we will move if I can uh, say something yeah I'm going to get right to you just a second uh, we'll move uh, legal which is seven which is a uh, a closed uh, session for attorney client privilege uh, we'll move that up to where that'll be right after we get into the new business okay all right, you had something you wanted to say, sir? Um, yes, I just wanted to acknowledge everybody and thank them for coming out here tonight. Uh, I'm actually somewhat excited that this many people care this much about our town and the issues surrounding our town to show up and to take their time on this evening and talk to us about it. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't say everybody in this room, we're good people. Um, Nobody here has any type of malicious intent. I think we're all here for the betterment of our community and the betterment of our town. Let's keep that in mind as we talk tonight, as you talk to us, we talk to you, and we talk to each other. Um, let's just operate in good faith and open minds and a friendly manner. Thank you. All right, uh, a couple of ground rules. Uh, we've had quite a number of people sign up for the uh, public comment uh, session. And uh, I'm going to limit it to three minutes per person. Mr. Mayor, before you get yes, there, we need to have an approval of the consent agenda. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'm sorry. Okay, the consent adjourn, uh, agenda, the one thing that's on there, one resolution, uh, I might need to explain that just a little bit. Uh, Mr. Collins, that's just for the entrance to the airport, changing that a little bit, right? It's changing a curve as yeah. it runs by the airport. Okay. So, okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the uh, consent agen agenda as presented. I'll make the motion. Second. Second. All in favor. Okay. So the next item of business is the uh, public session, public comments. A uh, couple of ground rules here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be fair to everybody. You've got three minutes. Uh, if you are representing an organization, of course, I want you to state your name. If you're representing an organization, say that. Uh, I will not count that against your three minutes. I have two stopwatches up here and a computer. So um, if somebody feels like I've been treated unfair, if I treat anybody unfairly, let me know. Uh, and if any council members have something you want to say during this uh, this period of whatever, please raise your hand. I'll call on you. 
Uh, we're just not going. We've got to have some kind of order, and uh, so is everybody okay with that? I will call on you. And, so. as, and as always, Mr. Mayor, I, I think the best advice and, and your your public comment periods have always served you best by being a time for the, the council to receive comments. It's really not doesn't uh, lend itself to being a back and forth right. exchange. So Absolutely, you know, for you to take input from from the, uh, the citizens. Okay, I'm assuming I've got everybody that wanted to speak. I've got 19 people lined up. So we'll start out. The first person, uh, Ms. Owenby. Mr. Mayor, <coughs> Madam Vice Mayor, Attorney Henning, members of the council, Macon County citizens and guests. My name is Gloria Raby Owenby. I am a seventh generation Maconian to live in the Cali Valley. My entire life I have lived on land adjacent to the Little Tennessee River. My history is not unique. Many of you have a similar story and have a love and close kinship with Macon County. My ninth generation grandchildren have Cherokee blood in their veins, as do many other <coughs> Maconians. The last time I checked, there were over 100 citizens in Macon County that are enrolled members of the tribe and they receive a per capita check. For 41 plus years, I have worked and made many lifelong friendships with the Cherokee. I have deep respect for them and their culture. To go into details would take too long, but I do want to say I have never felt anything but love and respect and loyalty from my Cherokee friends. Many of you have a different opinion from me, and I consider you my lifelong friends. My desire is when the dust settles, we will remain friends. I truly believe that everyone in this room wants what is best for Franklin and Macon County. I have been told many times that this is one of the best places to live in the world. In 1993, our Vice Mayor, Barbara McRae, wrote a wonderful history on the Nequasi Mountain, and I have a copy right here. <clears throat> on page 48, she tells of Gideon Morris, a Baptist minister, and his wife Rebecca, an Indian princess, receiving $3,000 as compensation for the 640-acre reservation, which was the site of the old Nequasi. This settlement is recorded in the Register of Deeds, Office Dated 314-1830. On pages 50 and 51, she describes in detail the efforts made to save the mound from being razed and made into commercial property. On the back page, and I love this, it says 1,000 years of history. Nequasi Mound, and I'm reading from this, in Franklin, North Carolina, marks the site of the old Cherokee town of Nequasi, a place rich in history and legend. It is the largest and best preserved mound in Western North Carolina, and the only one that is publicly owned. <coughs> I find it interesting and disturbing now, Vice Mayor Barbara McRae is now proposing to give the Nequasi Mound away, property owned by Macon County citizens, around 34,000 of us. I feel very strongly in honoring the deed, whose language clearly states that the Nequasi Mound belongs to all citizens. I will not waver to protect it for generations to come. The town has been a good steward. The mound is Missouri basically the same time. as it was for 73 years. Thank time. you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <coughs> okay, Mr. Show. My name is Edgar Show. Those of you that know me. Uh, know me as Bud Show. I'm 77 years old and I've spent about 45 years of that time in this county. Uh, one thing that I would like to bring to the attention of all people, although the deed is made out to the town of Franklin, it was all citizens of Macon County that tried to raise the amount that was paid for the land. Uh, I do not uh, need to make any enemies. Uh, the past is not a place we need to go to, but we should remember what values 
our forefathers <coughs> brought and uh, I think that we should uh, honor the deed and that's all. Thank you Mr. Show. Uh, Ms. Gooder? Good evening everyone. Um, my name is Betsy Gooder and I'm representing the citizens of Macon County. Um, the deed that we're discussing was uh, made up by Gilbert Jones who was a remarkable and very smart lawyer. And he did it, uh, it went through on uh, October 7th 1946 and I'm going to read excerpts from it um, because it speaks for itself we published it three times in the Macon County News hoping that everybody would read it and understand it as it is written the mound situated upon the property above described should be preserved for the citizens of Macon County and for posterity and the same shall be kept as it is now sta stands and shall be ex ex excavated it should not be excavated explored altered or impaired in any way or used for any commercial property i ex i want to say that again any commercial pur purpose and should be kept as a monument to the early history of Macon County in order that these truths and conditions may be carried out. The town is hereby authorized and empowered to exercise such control over the same as it is by law might do over other public properties belonging to it subject to the limitations and conditions above set forth. Any deed, lease, or other contract which in any way may interfere with the objects and purposes of this instrument as above set forth should be null and void. I repeat, null and void. And should the town of Franklin at any time fail to carry out the provisions of this instrument, then the citizens of Macon County shall have the right to apply to the court for injunction, relief, and to pursue said action to their own behalf and in the behalf of all other citizens of Macon County. Gilbert Jones, a lawyer, who wrote the 1946 deed was a wise man and he certainly uh, foresaw what was going to happen and has happened more than once it's been a kind of a sham that um, that the mound has come up and people have tried to destroy it um, so that is why he made an ironclad deed Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Wallace? For starters, numerous people are calling attention to a major conflict of interest in which Barbara McRae and her roles as Franklin Vice Mayor and Co-Chair of Nequasi Initiatives is trying to give with one hand and take away with the other thus compromising her duty to the citizens of Franklin and Macon County. You say, Barbara, that uh, town attorney John Henning Jr. assures you that conflict of interest refers only to financial gain and that it is perfectly legal for you to go forward with this scheme and that you even have a duty to vote in giving away the deed to our mound. But in any context, that advice is ill-conceived and untrue and you, Barbara, should recuse yourself from any such vote about the mound that involves both your giving it away and handing it to yourself in any manner that adversely affects the people of our town and county. A conflict of interest by definition is a situation in which a person or organization is involved in multiple interests, financial or otherwise, 
and in which serving one interest could involve working against another interest. Typically, this relates to situations in which the pers personal interest of an individual or organization might adversely affect a duty owed to the decisions for the benefit of a third party. In this case, a duty to the citizens of Macon County. Regarding the 1946 deed of trust and in regard to ownership of the Nequasi Mound, the historic chain of deeds for the mound has been totally ignored by proponents trying to transfer it from Franklin Town government oversight into private ownership. The entire marketing effort for the fledgling and questionable Nequasi initiatives has been based on one, ambiguous notions about cultural and racial reparations <laughs> and restitution, and two, improving private properties outside the perimeter of the mound, neither of which has anything to do with the deed or ownership of the mound itself. It would take an extremely willing suspension of disbelief for anyone who has ever read the 1946 deed of trust to argue that the purpose and intent of the deed means anything other than for the Franklin Town Council to have and to hold the deed to the mound on behalf of the citizens of Macon County for posterity forevermore. A breach of trust by our town council members is a looming worry for many of our citizens and trying to give away our mound is certainly a major breach of trust no matter how you try to wrap it up in pretty paper and put a ribbon on it. So why do it? No one has yet answered why development outside the perimeter of the 0.78 acre mound parcel depends on ownership of the mound itself. Ms. Wallace. Why? Because it doesn't Ms. depend Ms. on Wallace, simple me. as yeah. that. No, no, no ma'am. Your three minutes is up. Yeah, okay. okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Ms. Bird, Mary Bird. Yes, my name is Mary Ruth Bird. I've lived here most of my life. Uh, I taught school here for for many years. I retired, and uh, I'm proud to be a, a member of this county. And I want to read a letter from Peggy Huskison who is a former classmate and is also a property owner directly east of the Quasi Mound. She is in Florida right now and could not attend this meeting tonight. This is from her. To whom I may concern, as a member of the family of Macon County citizens, I believe that the ownership of the Quasi Indian Mound is set in stone. The town of Franklin holds the Quasi Indian Mound in trust for the citizens of Macon County. This publicly held site may be visited for free any day any, any, by any American or tourist. Please recognize the foresight that our ancestors had to purchase and deed it to all of us, the citizens of Bacon County. Do not cherish the dream they, they vision, where we would be if not for historical registers, national and state parks, and ownership by American citizens, and in this case, Bacon County citizens in our great county country. Please do not make any changes as to, to, as to how the ironclad ownership of the Cross Indian Mound is now written. Regards, Peggy R. Huskinson. Thank you, ma'am. Y'all wondering what I'm doing? I'm arguing with a computer back here. All right, uh, Miss Leland. Pardon? Who's winning? <laughs> Who do you think's winning? <laughs> Ms. Leland. There was much chatter about the Nikwaski initiative being partners with Mainspring, ECBI, or EBCI. Can't Make, hear you. We get the name wrong. There's much chatter about Nikwaski. Excuse me. It's, Ms. Leland, your name, please. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Dory right. Leland. Okay. There's much chatter about the Nikwaski Initiatives being partners with Mainspring, EBCI, Macon County, Town of Franklin, and Cowley Heritage Center. But there are no such legal partnerships in place, no representation of any of these entities that gives them partner status 
of any kind in a legal sense with McCloskey initiatives and certainly not partners with ownership of the mound. The town council votes to deed the mound over to Nikwaski Initiatives and seven people will become outright private owners of the mound parcel. So who would the new private owners of the mound, the Nikwaski Initiatives group, to whom the town council would sign over the deed to the 0.7 acre mound parcel valued at $321,750. Here are the seven names, no member, no other members. Barbara McRae, Juanita Wilson, Benjamin Lasseter, Hope Husky, Stacy Gusby, Bob McCullum, and Kim Smith. That's the crux of the matter, and there's no ulterior motive, and why do you want to transfer the mound from public government protection to privatization? Why do you want to change the deed so drastically? Why don't you just leave it as a 1946, the way it was written by Gilmer Jones all those years ago? Thank you, you ma'am. Mr. Siler, it's Robert Siler. My name is, <clears throat> excuse me, my name is Robert Siler. I'm a citizen of Macon County and a resident of the town of Franklin. And I'm not here representing anybody but myself. Some of what I'm going to say has already been said, but I just want to put a little historic perspective to this. The property was put up for sale in 1946. Uh, it was it and the surrounding property was subdivided and sold some to private owners. Anyone could have bought the property and could have used it in any way at that time in 1946. The people of Macon County showed the initiative to purchase it and to maintain it in perpetuity for the benefit the citizens of Macon County. Nobody else did this. Now, Barbara McRae has been quoted as saying that the Cherokees were impoverished and couldn't buy it by implication. I lived here in 1946, albeit I was nine years old, but pretty much everybody in Western North Carolina was impoverished in 1946. You know, if the citizens of Macon County hadn't bought this property, we wouldn't be having this discussion today because the property would probably have been bulldozed and developed and there would be uh, parties on it or something. Secondly, as several people have pointed out, this property cannot be used for any commercial purpose. Of read several quotes in the paper about it will be a financial boon to East Franklin if, <coughs> if, if property is uh, put in other ownership. Well, it, can't, it, it cannot be used for any commercial purpose. Barbara, they're after you tonight, but I agree with some of them. You're quoted in the press as on several matters pertaining to this and as we all know now you're a member of the town council and you're a member of the Nikwasi initiative uh, she stated in the press that she was did not have a conflict of interest and I respectfully disagree with that I don't think a conflict of interest is limited to financial matters as has been well said before, a person cannot serve two masters. And the Classy Initiative wants the town to deed the property to it, the Nikwasi Initiative. But the Nikwasi Initiative is only two years old, and as far as I can find, they have done nothing. May I make two, two, Too quick. two yes. suggestions? I would suggest to the council that the, the council ta table this matter until it can be further researched and considered to see if a compromise can be reached or if not, that they enter into a contract with the Nipasi Initiative and let them maintain the property for a set number of years and see how they perform before we do anything further. Thank you very much. 
uh, I will give the opposing side uh, 33 seconds additional it did it, it one of them uh, mr. West mr. Mark West Excuse me. Good evening. I'm here on behalf. Of, my name is Mark West, and I'm a member of the Macon County Folk Heritage Association, along with you know 20 or so of my closest friends and so on. But anyway, uh, I'm appearing on their behalf tonight, ladies and gentlemen of the town council. The Folk Heritage Association of Macon County is dedicated to preserving the region, the heritage of our region. Therefore, we wish to express our support for the transfer of the Quasi Mound deed to the Nequasi Initiative. Taking this action will ensure we pass along a vital piece of mountain heritage, as well as the increased economic opportunities in the town of Franklin and Macon County. <coughs> we are very pleased with the opportunity to gain new partners to honor the mound. Not only do we feel this partnership will protect Franklin's oldest man-made structure and part of our mountain heritage, but is the right thing to do for future generations. It ensures we pass along a vital piece of historical significance as well as increase the economic opportunities in Macon County. It's time to grant partial ownership of this sacred site to the Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians. Please vote in favor of the transfer of the deed to the Nequasi Initiative. And uh, I've got a letter here. I'll put that in the record. And That'll be fine. How do y'all do that? Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Okay, Mr. McCollum. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, Council, staff. My name is Bob McCollum, and uh, I'm here originally at the microphone to represent the board at the Cowboy School Arts and Heritage Center. Y'all have already received the letter electronically this week in support of the Cross the Initiative transfer. I'm going to wear a different hat for just a second. I'm also the newest member of the Cross the Initiative. Uh, but I would like to put a third hat on if I can here for just a minute and take a perspective on this that I'm not hearing from anyone else. The people who saved the mound here in 1946 were the children, the grandchildren, and the great-grandchildren of families multi-generational families who had lived here among the Cherokee when, when there were many more of them living here in the county than on that. It would be ludicrous for us to think that those people didn't better understand <coughs> the connection between the Cherokee uh, and the land and the water and their spiritual and cultural connection to the mound here. So in saving it in 1946, this wasn't all about the people of Franklin. They had to know the connection of the Cherokee to the land too, and that was on their mind as well. We've had 73 years to lose that connection and our understanding of the Cherokee connection. I've heard us all talk about our uh, European descendant connection to the mound, but I haven't heard anybody talk about the Cherokee's connection. And so for just a minute, uh, I would like to tell you that for the, for the last four or five years, I've been privileged to work with the Cherokee on a whole variety of things and to sit and listen to the speakers and the elders and they, they've never turned us away from their table they've included us in all of the all of the planning and discussions they've they've never once decided we shouldn't be involved in that the connection the passion that i hear the cherokee speak about the mound and their other sacred sites here is is really something and I try as we may, we will, ne us in this room here, other than the people who raised in the Cherokee culture, will never understand that. We will never understand that. To us, it's a relic down here at the bottom of the hill. It's this thing that we grew up with here in the community. To the Cherokee, it is a real time, today part of their culture, their spirituality, their storytelling, their dances, their language. It's, it's completely different to them than it is to us. One of the reasons for trying to do this is to put the mound in the hands of an independent third party to simply hold on to the deed. The mound is not going anywhere. Nothing's gonna happen on that mound. All we're trying to do is to offer our friends, our neighbors, our partners, an equal voice in the stewardship of the mound as we go forward. And I would tell you that in 1946, 
that was not an end point. That was a starting point. And what we have the opportunity to do here now is to finish saving the mound and let our partners come in. Thank you for your time and thank you for your willingness to serve in elected office. Okay, folks, I, 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 I don't think that we need to do a lot of applauding or holding up signs. I'm going to keep this low key, and uh, I would uh, ask that you respect that. Mr. McCollum, I gave you 33 extra seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Tamra Zwanik, did I pronounce that right? <laughs> Pardon? I can't even pronounce it. Okay. <laughs> My name is Tamara Zwanak. Good evening. Members of the public, Mayor uh, Scott, members of the Franklin Town Council, good evening. I'm standing before you today as a resident of Franklin. I oppose the conveyance and I have several objections. The rush to transfer the deed to an EDCI tribal representative through the Nkwasi Initiative is allegedly in violation of the conveyance made on 7 October 1946. The heritage of the indigenous people who inhabited the land before the Cherokee has not been preserved. EBCI Chief Sneed acknowledges that indigenous people were here 10,000 years ago, long before the Cherokee and Europeans arrived. That individual members of the Cherokee tribe created the mound out of discarded debris. <coughs> that the cultural heritage of indigenous people who occupied the land first has been destroyed by Cherokee dumping and efforts to recover stolen cultural artifacts are lacking. If deeded to the Nkwasi Initiative, the EBCI allegedly intends to apply to the BAI to make this tribal land. Finally, I want to put on record my strident opposition to the statement made by Vice Mayor McRae as reported in the Macon County News, March 14, 2019. McRae said in a public forum, as a representative of the Franklin Town Council, the following, we the white people took it away from them 200 years ago. McRae's use of vitriolic rhetoric pushed through this deed transfer is unacceptable and entirely without merit. EBCI Chief Richard Sneed agrees there is a social cost for her divisive rhetoric. Chief Sneed has made it clear this has nothing to do with reparations and McRae has misled the public. Misled the public. Her tactics decrade the office she holds. McRae patronizes the very people she personally seeks to exploit by allegedly making the conveyance indirectly part of her attempts to give her house, get her house on the historic register. Yeah. This is a conflict of interest. Tonight I'm asking Councilmember McRae to publicly apologize for her statement. I believe a sincere apology will help to heal the divide she created. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brower, Chris Brower. <coughs> well, thank you. My name is Chris Brower, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. Uh, I am not going to claim to be a legal expert about whether the deed can be conveyed to another party, nor am I to be an expert on potential conflict of interest, uh, as social media has tried to argue as well. Uh, what I'd like to first bring up is I hold nothing against anyone that is in belief of holding on to the deed. Uh, I certainly hope they respect my opinion as well, which is to the contrary. Uh, it's ironic to me that a lot of these people I've seen on social media that uh, do not want the deed transferred are also the same people that complain about Franklin Town Council doing nothing for the town. In fact, I think they personally blame you for a Target not being here, for a Home Depot not being here, which of course is ludicrous. But on the other hand, it seems ironic that they want nothing changed. They want status quo in this particular incident, in this particular case. Um, I've only had a couple decades experience here, but I must admit to me the mound has just been overlooked uh, with the exception of the herbicide that was accidentally sprayed. Um, it hasn't gotten much attention and certainly does not get the respect that it should, I believe, both as an asset to the town, to the county, and to the community. Um, the partnership that was initiated, uh, that was the original reason, I believe, for Nikwasi Initiative to come together 
to bring the town and EBCI together to talk about the mound and ways that it could possibly be utilized to benefit of more people in the community and tourism and that. Um, this group has been formed, the seven names that have been read off. I know six of them personally. I think it, it's a bit crazy that people would think that Barbara McCray does anything that would be harmful to Macon County, Stacey Guffey, and the people that all work with EBCI are certainly all in favor of doing the right thing. And certainly with deeds, uh, obviously deeds can be constructed to protect the mound as it was intended. Uh, Main Springs brought up quite frequently, and it's funny, while Main Springs often been brought up by a land developer on social development, uh, social media, it's actually quite the opposite. We know that they are there to help preserve the land. They are very familiar with how to get grants. EBCI can bring resources that the town obviously doesn't have to improve that whole area. If the town doesn't convey it over, I honestly don't know, will that stop anything happening? Will that be the end of Nick Wasi initiative? I have no idea. But I think one analogy I can think of is imagine you had a beautiful historic house, but you didn't own one foot of property outside of that house. And yet it got car dealerships, oil repair stations, you know, gas stations, just polluted the earth all around it, and really created for, in my opinion, kind of an ugly blight. I mean, that mountain does not look pretty today when you drive by it. But if you wanted people to clean up all that land around you, invest and re-landscape and do everything all the way up to the edge of your house, what guarantee is it for those people investing that time and money and energy that you're going to maintain that house? So it makes sense to make it a cooperative venture, and I think that's what Nick Kwasi Initiative is looking for. So again, appreciate your time, appreciate your attention, and again, uh, hopefully you folks will think about it more thoroughly and, and not let social media control your outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Okay, we may have a murder back here of a computer in the back. Okay. All right, Mr. Uh, Dr. Mercer, Gordon Mercer. Hello, my name is Gordon Mercer, and I'm Professor Emeritus at I'm Professor Emeritus at what Emeritus at Western Carolina University, and for years taught in the uh, MPA and directed the MPA program. In fact, our county and our city manager uh, currently are graduates of that program. Um, one of the hardest things to do is to get, engage in long-term planning, and I would really like to commend all the council members here for authorizing the long-term planning. I think you're really to be commended. It is safe to say in towns and communities, you don't get very far without long-term planning. And we've heard a lot of diverse ideas here today. So I think that's very important. Of course, it is also important that for over three years, the town council has authorized these groups to come together. And of course, that includes the town of Franklin. It includes Cherokee. Main Spring and uh, Macon County. So it's really been great to see these groups come together. Um, and uh, I think uh, one of the things that uh, I remember Joe Collins saying, and again, I commend his work, is that it is important to bring a lot of groups together in government to engage in uh, planning that we are seeing the evidence of here today. I just wanted to say uh, that one of the hardest things to do is to work together. It's probably one of the big challenges of government. We can look out in our society today and just see that there isn't enough of that. Um, one of the things, one of my favorite presidents I would get was Lyndon Baines Johnson. And we didn't think too much of him. He was eligible for another term and then, uh, but he could see he was losing a lot of support. But now we go back and rank him as the, one of the great presidents in the top 10. And I would like to mention that one of his favorite statements and one of the reasons he has really survived the test of time in the top ten, he said, let us reason together. And so I think we're, we've seen evidence of this happening, working together, uh, sharing our ideas. And so I would really want to encourage the town council to continue to reason together, to continue to uh, engage in joint planning, and, and I think this whole thing uh, can be resolved and we can see a much better situation for one of the important sites in our region. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.
Okay, uh, Mr. Fred Alexander. Good evening, I'm Fred Alexander, a town resident. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight and for your commitment to the future of our town. Many of us in this room look like grandparents, and that makes me think that if I were a grandchild visiting here, I think I'd carry home impressions about the incredible natural beauty of our mountains, a downtown that is old-timey in the best ways, and with some enjoyable special events and maybe the mound. If it was the mound of today, at best there would be a mental footnote because, my, because of my interest in history. I might say, oh yeah, my dad said that little hill we passed near the big gas station was an Indian mound. My little brother in the back seat would say, I didn't see it. <laughs> but if we had reason to stop, I might say, that was very interesting. There was a park with an Indian mound, a museum, and some other interesting stuff. I saw how it was here with just the Indians, and then later after the settlers came. And on the way home, I watched some YouTube movies about the town of Franklin and the Cherokee. I might even write a paper about this for a class. The next time, I'll take a lot of pictures and bring a drone that my dad doesn't notice. Whichever future is chosen, it will be well and widely known. Because of the news story picked up as far away as San Francisco, more people than ever will know about Franklin, North Carolina. Thank you for doing your best to represent us all here now. And for those in the future who may not know any of our names, but they will certainly know the decision that you made. I believe you have sufficient facts, opinions, and legal counsel. So all I can add is a whoosh. My wish is that the future of this ancient mound will be determined by hopes, not fears, that we will be able to embrace friendship and common heritage and not a kind of cultural isolation. Thus our respect for the past will be displayed in our vision for the future. And one other thing, regarding Barbara McRae, based on knowing her here nearly 40 years, in working with her more than 20 years, I believe that questions of her integrity are simply in error. Father, I know of no other living or dead person who has done more to collect, preserve, and pass on the history of Franklin and Macon County. <coughs> I beg you to please if I give it to one side, I'm going to give it to the other side. Okay? I'm sorry, that's the old military and bomb coming out. Okay, uh, Ms. Landstrom. Is it? Oh, that's so. I don't want to take up your time. It's your time. <laughs> it's not you got to count it against me. Is that it? Uh, yeah. I don't know. You put it in box five. I think it'll sit in the back of the lounge. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, folks. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor and members of the council, my name is Marcia Lindstrom. Uh, my husband and I uh, built, a, can you hear me? built a vacation house here in 2000. And like so many other people, we fell in love with Franklin <coughs> and Lincoln County and moved here full time when he retired in 2010. I want everybody here to know, and I'd like to speak to all of you as well as the council, that. I'm not here as some newcomer who's trying to tell you what's best. I respect everyone's opinion and I understand the strong feelings that everyone has. I first became interested in the 
mound when tensions were high in 20, 20, 2014 when the mound was brown. And it was just so upsetting for all the parties involved. And I was thinking about it, and I, I'd be glad to pass this around. This is the Indian Temple Mound in Fort Walton, Florida, uh, near where I grew up in Pensacola. It's downtown, it's on Main Street, and it's a beautiful stone structure that commands so much attention and so much respect. So my thought was, in 2014, what if there could be some grand vision for the mound that would make it a fabulous place for our community and it would be um, another example of Franklin's rich cultural heritage, possibly even a, a historic trail from the Historic Museum to the Scottish Museum to the Cherokee Mound. And now the plan is to have it possibly be part of a heritage trail from North Georgia into Cherokee. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity for Franklin. I hope sincerely that the uh, differing sides can come together, that there can be reassurance, that the mound will not be given away or unprotected or unpreserved. And the last thing I'd like to say, for those of you who gave your pennies and dimes and dollars to buy the mound and protect the mound, think of what a fantastic return on investment you would have if something absolutely amazing happened. And you could tell your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, I started this and look where we are now. And you should be so proud and, and be commended for what Ever you did to save the man for the M Ms. Lynch, Thank Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Mayor? Yes. Should we address the gentleman in the blue t-shirt who keeps speaking over all of the speakers at the voting? I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, the second row back, the gentleman in the light blue t-shirt. Folks, uh, if, if you would, do not be carrying on side conversations. It's very hard. Our clerk is working to keep notes these tape recorders sometimes, uh, I think uh, Mr. Coggins will bear me out, can pick up even whispers out in the audience. So I would ask you, no side comments out there, if you don't mind. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Wilson. Why you need to live this shit over though, huh? My sheets a little geek. My name is Juanita Wilson. I am a member of the Eastern Band Cherokee Indians and a co chair of the Nequasi Initiative. I'm going to be really short, sweet, and honest. Um, we, are, we are all united in one main thing, one very critical thing. We all love Nequish. We all want the best for it. And it's odd how these mounds were saved. I've heard, I've heard how the gathered pennies and nickels and dimes save it. It's not the only mound to be saved. <coughs> how we was saved by the landowners getting in touch with what was then the land trust for Little Tennessee, <coughs> who came to me at the Eastern Band and said, we need to do whatever we can to save this mound that the landowners wanted back to go back into the position of the Cherokee. They weren't Cherokee, but they loved it enough they wanted to preserve it. So we have that property in relationship <coughs> with Main Spring through conservation <coughs> easement. We didn't demand to own it. My ancestors didn't believe in owning land. We couldn't own it any more than we could own the water or the air. But we inhabited it and we took care of it. Kadua, which is our mother town, it was saved by a groundhog. <laughs> Ogana. So believe it or not, our own tribe was looking to buy it 
and put a golf course on it and many other economic development things. So wiser, calmer heads prevail and now we preserve it. It's beautiful. We have annual gatherings down there. The Cherokee Nation from Oklahoma, Oklahoma comes. It's the United Gadula Band. And as far as debris on top of the mound, we do that as a tradition. We bring dirt from our own homes and we put it on top of the mound. It's a sign of respect and unity. I just wanted to clarify that. Lastly, the Nequasi Mound, Nequish, is what our, my people call it. It means the star place. Right now, it's saved because of what your grandchildren, great grandchildren, probably ours too. I can't imagine that Cherokee children weren't involved in that, but I don't have the history to say, definitely. They saved it. We're looking to save it again and put it into uh, the, the Quasi Initiative, which is made up of mostly people from Macon County and Franklin. They outnumber us, <laughs> but we don't think of it that way. We, we're, we're neighbors, we're partners, we're people who all love this mound. And I want to I'll commend all of you for having that vision. We at Cherokee don't always have long-term plans either. We don't always, it's scary when you're, when you're political, it's not always easy to do that. But don't think of that, think of us all, please because we want to share it with you, we want to move forward with you into the future, and we want to heal, we want to be one. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> okay, uh, Jean Welch. Not this one. <laughs> <laughs> my name, excuse my voice, is Jean Welch. Um, I've lived here for 25 years, taught uh, art history at Southwestern. Brandon was one of my students. Uh, and I really, I just want to say that everybody cares. It's just how, how to do it, the best way to do it. Um, yes, work together, but my message is be careful. Um, I personally lie awake at night thinking about the racial atrocities that happened here at the birth of this nation, it was awful. But I don't think reparations will be made by giving a few developers control of the land that was purchased by citizens and school children as a public trust. From what I understand, the mound was here before the Cherokee, but I think the question is moot. There is another more important principle involved here. Let us be careful not to set a precedent of allowing elected officials to transfer public lands to private special interests. Let's be careful. This may be just the tip of the iceberg. The citizens should pay attention, and that means all of us. What I see is a profit motive. I see commercialization of the mound. I see a hastily put together foundation by people in Asheville. As we know from experience, just lately, uh, foundations can be a front for special interests. I don't think this area needs more development, more casinos, more traffic, more pollution. There are things more important in life than profit and economic expansion. The people of Macon County, I think, could find enough money to buy the land surrounding the mound and create for the county, for the people, a beautiful memorial or museum and public park. The best small towns worldwide are the ones with many parks and green spaces not parking lots, high rises, or casinos. I know there are billionaires who would like to privatize, exploit everything. Some of them, I imagine, are even willing to burn down our national forests, if that's what it takes. They are the same types as those who committed these original atrocities. <coughs> I say keep those who would sell out of public, sell out our public lands, to private interests out of office. This is not to say that a specific foundation, such as the foundation that rescued the Washington's Mount Vernon estate, 
as well. Are not good. Time. All done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Dr. Lassiter. Thank you all. My name is Ben Lassiter. I am Deputy Director <coughs> at Main Spring Conservation Trust. I'm also a board member of the Nikwasi Initiative. When the, when the Nikwasi <coughs> Mound was conserved in 1946, the town of Franklin at that time was the logical recipient of that deed. And for 72 plus years, the town's done a good job of basic maintenance and prevention of physical alteration of the mound. There's no doubt about that. Now in 2019, though, it's time to consider a new model and expanded scope of conservation and interpretation for the benefit of future generations of this region. We feel Nikwasi Mound and the old Nikwasi town deserve management, stewardship, and resources that are only going to be made available by multiple partners, including the town, who are currently engaged in the Nikwasi Initiative. I'd now like to read uh, part of a letter sent last week to the town council and the mayor, written by the Community Foundation of Western North Carolina in support of the Nikwasi Initiative. In the interest of time, I'll jump, jump down to the second paragraph. Community the Community Foundation of Western North Carolina was one of the first funders of the facilitation effort that led to the formation of the Nikwasi Initiative and has continued to provide additional funding to support its work. We were excited to be part of helping the town of Franklin, Macon County, and the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians work together on past and present issues surrounding the mound, and by doing so, experience a sense of partnership and reconciliation that has been sorely missing for generations. We have seen Mainspring Conservation Trust's work as a neutral convener lead to the development of the, the, the Nikwasi Initiative as a vibrant, independent, <coughs> nonprofit organization that has been a good partner in Franklin for the foundation. The Nikwasi Initiative is making strides in developing a cultural corridor that promises significant economic, cultural, and environmental benefits for the entire area. The Nikwasi Initiative and its partners have been careful, thoughtful, and passionate about doing what is right for the town of Franklin, Macon County, and the EBCI, and we believe their work is improving the Franklin community. Please know of our support for the Nikwasi Initiative as you deliberate next steps we feel strongly that it is working in the best interests of everyone who cares deeply about the Nikwasi Mound. Sincerely, Elizabeth Brazis, President of the Community Foundation of Western North Carolina. Thank you, guys. Okay, Mr. McCall. Mr. McCall, just a second. Sure. Chief Adams, will the keeper of the thermostat check the uh, temperature in this here room? <laughs> what do y'all want? I think we want it. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Uh. <laughs> yeah. so, somebody back there, our engineer or somebody, knows how to operate that. <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. McCall, I did not take any of your time. You're up. Um, my name is uh, yeah, okay. Settle down. McCall, and um, I'm born and raised here in Macon County. And uh, I come behalf uh, just as a business owner. And uh, I just want to encourage the board to look, uh, really look at the area that we're talking about. Um, I've been in real estate in the past, and uh, I see that area as... Um, an area that needs um, really needs spruced up, and uh, that area has uh, has really kind of lied in ruins over the years. And I feel like that the, the uh, Nikwasi Initiative and and the idea that is set forth um, with the potential of a museum uh, being able to utilize that area, um, I think is a great thing. And uh, you know, I really look at that corridor as people do come in off of 441. 
uh, using uh, that area for parks and being able to use it as green space uh, with the mound. I feel like that there is a very good uh, flow for that and vision. Uh, being able to use uh, the building that's been vacant for years, if it was used for a museum, I think it would be a great thing. Um, and I think that uh, the thing that I would challenge you guys is, um, as, as town council, is looking at the, uh, the mound is, is it a possessive thing that we have to keep it? Or is it an opportunity for us to open our hand and to lead by being able to extend our hand and be able to work with the Nequasi Initiative and each individual uh, that is involved in that? So I thank you guys for taking the time to hear everybody tonight. Um, and I do support being able to uh, go forward with the mound transfer. Thank you, sir. <coughs> okay, Ms. Irvin. Hi, my name is Susan Irvin. Um, I'm here to speak in enthusiastic support of transferring the deed of the mound to the Nefasi Initiative. We should be humbled and grateful to the Cherokee people and tribe for their willingness to work on a plan to include the full community and in the future of this sacred historical site. It is commendable that the people of Franklin saved the mound from development, but it has been a sacred site for a thousand years or more, and the Cherokee never sold the mound to anybody. It's time that they have their rightful role in the control of the mound. The Nequasi Initiative, whose members are all known and respected community leaders, from appropriate groups for this mission has established delicate and important partnerships over a period of years that will allow the entire community to benefit. These partnerships have been lacking until now. The, the initiative has the structure, the knowledge, the commitment, <coughs> and the resources to create a future for the mound area that will be more beautiful, more appropriate, more educational and more inclusive, with no thought whatsoever of commercial development. Thanks to the town for being willing to move forward in a positive way, with special thanks to Vice Mayor Barbara McCray. Barbara is a visionary who helps visions become reality by getting other people at least as half as excited as she is. She serves this community with equal parts integrity intelligence and love i would also like to invite everyone here to an upcoming program at the cowie school heritage center we have a lecture series called where we live history nature and culture on tuesday april 16th at 6 30 dr ben steer the director of the cherokee Pro studies program at western carolina university <laughs> will give a talk on the nequasi mound Dr. Steer has worked on a collaborative study of ancestral Cherokee mound and town sites with the Tribal Historic Preservation Office of the Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians since 2011. He will review the archaeology and history of the mound and discuss the significance of the site for understanding the remarkable cultural landscape of the Cherokee heartland of Western North Carolina. <coughs> so please join us at Cowie School April 16th 6 30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, that concludes uh, the public comment uh, period tonight. I think we had uh, 19 people spoke. Pass that down. So we had a motion on the floor to move a closed session up under new business to be the first item on new business. And Mr. Mayor, yes. Uh, the statute that permits you to go into closed session for that reason uh, requires you, if there is a, a live controversy to be considered, that you take any advice on to include that in the motion. So the motion to go into closed session needs to include case 19 CVD two, okay. Uh, 219. Okay. All right. I'm I open a, to the motion. question. If we need to go into closed session after we talk to each other about this in open session, is it possible to do that again after the meeting? Or do we only get this one closed session? You can have as many closed sessions as you want to add to your agenda. I mean, you'd have to, if the, the council chose to have additional closed session time, you can do that. So after we come back, if we need to talk to each other again in closed session, it would be okay to. to do it well, depending, you have to have a good reason to go into closed session. That's right. And, um, attorney client privilege covers what discussion that I know of that we need to have. We can't 
just go into closed session to talk about anything. And I don't think conveyance of a piece of property, if that's if that was the question to come up, is not germane for, for closed session, just to have you talk about the ins and outs of it. I just don't know what we're going to talk about after we get in there and get out of well, there. <laughs> we may need to talk again. I'm just asking procedurally if that's possible, if there's it questions. possible. If we it comes up, to I'll advise you on whether or not mm -hmm. you have grounds for it. Thank you. All right. I'm open for the motion. I don't remember the entire <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I would make the motion that we go into closed session um, pursuant to GS 143-18.183 and to discuss 19 CVD 219. That's, that's my motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All, all in favor? Any opposed? All right, folks, I, I don't know what to tell you. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <coughs> okay. The air is back on. Pardon? The air is back on. Well, go turn it on. <laughs> you know I would never be presumptuous. <laughs> uh, Chief Adams, <laughs> thank you, sir. All right, we're back into uh, open session now. And Mr. Mayor, uh, just for the minutes, you do need to take a motion to go back in. The all right, and uh, I'll entertain a motion. Open second. All right, I've never quite understood it when we're back in open session, but uh, all in favor? Okay. All right, uh, Mr. <coughs> Henning or Mr. Uh, Collins, who wants to? Yes. Move on here. Your Honor, I make a motion uh, that the board engage our town manager to uh, uh, retain competent, adequate counsel, legal counsel, to vigorously defend the lawsuit which is filed against Macon County. Okay, is there a second? Against Franklin. Against Franklin, excuse me, okay. which is in Macon County. All right, a second. I'll second. All in favor. Okay, so that leaves us tonight. Uh, I guess we won't bring this up to the May is that correct, Councilor? Well, let's, be made? let's discuss it, yeah. Okay, I mean, we're, we can discuss it, okay. All right. So, Mr. Mayor, I think I could initiate that discussion for you. I okay. have drafted for you, and you have in your agenda packet what uh, is certainly a first attempt at a draft. <coughs> and it is one that I am very comfortable telling you uh, would convey the Nequasi property to Nequasi Initiative in a legal fashion uh, that. I do not read the 1946 deed to constrain your property ownership to the point where per perpetual ownership of the fee simple is required. Uh, but it does observe and would honor the, the restrictions that are in the 1946 deed as to the, well, all of them, Your Honor, plus, plus the uh, lengthy, uh, a nearly 10 page preservation agreement that goes into if anything much more detail and much greater uh, control that the town would have about the the, the care and maintenance of the, of the mound property. It also has in it several different ways that the property reverts to the town in the event that the Quasi Initiative isn't able to remain in existence or. Um, it also has a first refusal, right, a first refusal that would give the town the latitude to call the property <laughs> to the town in, in the event of a violation of that agreement. So I hope you've all had time to read it at this point. Um, I do think we'll have some back and forth with, uh, there's always been counsel from uh, the uh, citizenship in the town that's had some thoughts on what the what the to say about it. <laughs> And most willing to listen to but okay. uh, you have a draft and I'm most willing to answer any questions you have. all right on on the draft I just want to make sure the public knows that is a public document and any yes. any member of the public who wants to see that will see that copies are made agreeable before any further action is taking on it as this as the council here if somebody wants to 
I don't want to listen to the intent Unless, of the council to vote on anything. No, today. And that's it is a, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Document. Uh, okay. So it, it's, I'm all for it. Listen, I think you ought to hire a helicopter and have it dropped over the whole town. So I can do that. A to read. Yeah. <laughs> then I'd get caught littering. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay, any, any further discussion from the board? I'd like yes, ma'am. I, I would like to ask the attorney if you would please address the conflict of interest issue that the people brought up. I'm glad you asked because I think several comments that you had to sit there and endure about having a conflict of interest in this uh, matter were way out of bounds and, and patently unfair to have to listen to. Um, I guess somebody can come up with some different definition of conflict of interest that suits their purpose. Uh, you do not have a legal conflict of interest. Uh, a legal conflict of interest in the state of North Carolina for a local government official does require you to either have a 10% ownership uh, in the entity with which the local government is contracting, which is not even legally possible given the structure of the Quasi Initiative. It has no membership. It's a nonprofit organization, meaning that it is pledged to the federal and state governments that it will never have any assets that inure to a private benefit. Um, either you or a spouse has to derive a, a, a personal benefit either in the form of some uh, thing, money or commission or, or property out of it. Uh, and, and as you and I have discussed, you are doing none of those things. Uh, and given that you do not have a legal conflict of interest, state of North Carolina, the laws of this state say that you are compelled to vote. Uh, so that would that would be my advice to you when and if we take a vote on on transfer of this property. Thank you. I, okay, sir. Sure. All right. Any further? Yes, sir. Just in review, I just want to go down through here and address some notes that I've taken here. Um, I have legal question mark. Uh, town council is telling us that legal representation is telling us it is legal to transfer the deed. Um, the 1946 deed restrictions um, are ironclad. That is the ironclad part of the 1946 deed is the deed restrictions. They would convey onto another deed holder. Uh, public access is not to be limited to Nequasi Mound. Um, and there is a reversion clause, which you talked about a second ago. One concern that I think is a legitimate concern that was brought up tonight is the word partnerships talked about a lot and I think that's great. I, I want to see this as a partnership because this moment in time, the ideas that have come together with the Nicolasi Initiative, I think are, are honorable and great. If the deed is to be transferred, we want to capture that spirit in legalese so that the ideas specifically conveyed by Bob McCollum are honored in the legal document so that the wheels don't fall off of the situation so that the bad things that people are afraid of happening can happen um that being said uh do we want to um <coughs> see how the nequasi board is structured so that we understand what the makeup of that board is do we want to say that a town council member has to be on the board or the two or the two Eastern band members have to be on that board at all times? Do we want to structure that board so that it truly is a partnership between these entities? So having examined the documents, the organic documents of, of the initiative, I can tell you that uh, the bylaws do spell out what the membership of the, the uh, board of directors is to be because again it has no no members or shareholders per se of, of the initiative just a board of directors which is a common way to have a nonprofit <coughs> govern so it's it just makes it that much clearer we don't have any ownership of the, the you know the stuff that this nonprofit is going to manage um, what the bylaws currently say is that it does uh, it calls for equal representation from Town of Franklin, Macon County, Eastern Band of, of Cherokee Indians, and Main Spring Conservation Trust. Uh, and my attempt at, at solemnizing that and formalizing it is, is contained in the preservation agreement to say before any bylaws change would be effective, it would have to be approved by at least the Town of Franklin, uh, by, by this board. 
Um, so I, I and again, all of this is a draft, and, and may, there may be a desire to see changes and things. But that's that's my attempt to do exactly what you said to ensure that that entity does retain the character it currently has of having representation from those those parts. Okay. I have a question. Sir. Be before we enter into a partnership, should we not have something drawn up making the town a full partner with the Nequasi Initiative? Right now, we're not really a partner. Uh, we have never formalized a partnership with the Nequasi Initiative. Well, I mean, the, again, nearly 10 pages of preservation agreement and the reversion clauses and, and restrictions that are in the deed that the town would give to the, the, the Quasi Initiative would, would go a long way to, to making you pretty close. I mean, in fact, I don't, I, if, if anything, that's you have more control over the property than just as a, as a one-fourth vote. But pretty close is not good enough. I don't think it would be more more than just partnership and a one for but vote. what I'm getting at I think we need some kind of formal agreement of being a partnership or being in the partnership I mean they we know how many members that apparently are going to come from Main Spring how many are going to come from uh, the Quasi initiative I don't know if there'll be any from the Eastern Band I don't know but I think we need some kind of agreement well, their bylaws call for equal representation from right. those four entities, okay. and and putting it in this document would would is contractual. That it would be how many how many members would we have on the uh, partnership? Their bylaws say equal representation. I, I mean, I don't. You could we could discuss with them, and that's a, it's a separate entity than than the town. Uh, whether they would be amenable to a bylaws amendment that would spell out a number. Okay. But but the way that their board is structured is a. <coughs> I think it's a minimum of four and a maximum of nine directors with equal representation to be drawn from those four entities. And again, mm -hmm. it, I would be much more concerned with saying that the town was not going to keep enough um, strings <coughs> attached to the management of the property if I said, okay, well, that's just transfer it to them and don't worry about the boatload of other restrictions that this deed has in it. Uh, about how the property gets managed, that that you know the town then could get out, but you're you're not you're only a plurality anyhow if you're two out of eight, uh, if that's what's on on the board. Um, but that's is that's, and that may be say true the initiative, but the town keeps so much overarching control over what any additions to the property, uh, anything like in terms of a structure or anything that that might be planned. <coughs> Uh, nothing will be taken away without the town's okay and, and passing on it first. Um, title can't be alienated without coming through you first, and you have the, the right to, of right first refusal <coughs> required to be conveyed back to you for no cost. There's just a myriad of ways that this deed keeps total control of the property in the town in, on top of per participation in the quasi initiative. Talking about your deed. Yes, sir. We need to give the public time to be able to digest that deed because it is a matter of public concern. And then uh, we will have another comment period when we get ready to act because I think the public has a right to know what's in that deed. Any, I think any, it's up to the board as to how mm -hmm. we go forward with some I know, board I know, and We've I'm, had a, a good open tonight. I feel like I'm a, on the corner at Winslow, Arizona. I'll never be here again. This is an issue that you're not going to take, you're not going to see it in law school, you're not going to see it again in your career, but we're here at an issue. And council, you and the other council have worked hard, and you've got some good documents, maybe the, maybe the very documents which carry us through this. But we've got a month, in my mind. That's right. We've got some time to let it sit and to think about some of these things and if in fact uh, something comes to us that the council agrees for all of the ones involved that damn, I wish I would put that in there be better to have it before the cake is baked so I'm thinking uh, that we're here's where we're at tonight that we put the matter on the uh, regular agenda for the May mm -hmm. meeting with the uh, 
intention to vote up or down on the decision. Okay, you want to make that a motion? That's my motion. Okay, second. second. All in favor? <coughs> Any opposed? Okay. All right, are we ready to move on? I would like to pontificate yes. for a moment again. That's an unusual thing, but <laughs> bring it on. I just, I'm, a lot of people came and talked to us. Let's address some of their concerns, and uh, maybe we can get some good ideas out of out of this. Um, commercialization of the mound was brought up several times, and understandably so. Um, educational opportunities are more what I see than the Quasi Initiative is about as opposed to commercialization. I think commercialization of the private property surrounding it, that would naturally happen if you help make Nequasi an asset to the town, which the town has preserved it for 73 years and been a pretty good foster parent of it for that amount of time. A lot more could be done to make it better public access educational. Um, a lot of people are being accused of, of violating deeds and not honoring deeds. I think that they see it as trying to honor the intent of the 1946 deed, to share the mound, to have more people have a say in the mound, to celebrate the mound. Um, the history of Maconian saving the mound should be told, and it's not told. Outside of this conversation that's happened a couple of times when the Quasi's brought up, nobody knows that story, and people should know the story. <coughs> There's a lot of talk about, well, the mound's not Cherokee. The mound was built before them. Let's tell the history. Let's tell the real history of Nequasi and allow people to learn it. Let's make Nequasi an educational opportunity for the town of Franklin and for Macon County and for this region. Tell it like it is and let people know about it. So I don't see it so much as commercialization as, as an educational opportunity. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, anything else? All Can right. I just say, <coughs> yes, ma'am. I'm not trying to get my house on the National Register, just for the record. <laughs> okay. Sorry there. All right. Okay. Uh, anything else? All right, let's move on. Uh, Town of Franklin audit contract, Madam Manager. Wow. Yes, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, what you have before you tonight, um, your finance officer and administration have looked at your previous audit contract with Martin Starnes. We were on a five-year contract. We thought it would be in the best interest of the town of Franklin to solicit bids for our audit contract. Of the audit contracts, we did receive four. Uh, we sent out four bids. We received two proposals back. The breakdown, one is for Martin Starnes, it would be for a three-year proposal. Your overall cost would be, um, the first year would be $35,000, which is significantly less than current year. Current year's right at about $37,950. Second year would be $35,075, and then the third year would be $36,050. The other um, applicant who solicited a bid from was Gold, uh, Killian and Gold out of Asheville. Um, they would actually end up after three years being about almost $4,300 more. So it would be staff's recommendation to move forward uh, with a three-year audit contract which would be budgeted annually in your budget each year with Martin Starnes. It's been very well vetted out by the staff. Yes, okay, sir. any discussion on it? If not, I'll entertain a motion to proceed. Second. second. All in favor. Okay. Water and sewer allocation for workforce homestead. Yes, Madam Mr. Manager. Yes, Mr. Mayor and Council. What you have before you, this request will look very familiar. It was actually a request that was submitted last May of 2018 by Verbena Development. According to our water and sewer standards, um, it is only valid, that allocation is only valid for one year. And at this time, Verbena is still diligently working to try and make that development a reality. So that's why I wanted to explain that tonight instead of putting this item on the consent agenda. What we're looking for tonight is just basically to move forward with the same allocation they requested last year at this time and grant it for an additional year. Okay, motion to approve. I move that we approve. Second? Second. All in favor. 
Well, I guess legal is over with for right now, so let's move on to announcements. Oh, yes. Somebody is skip. Item D. D. Guardrail. Guardrail. Well, darn if I didn't. Okay. All right, Madam Manager, uh, the guardrail. Yes, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, we've done, staff has done some research on the request that we've heard last month about the possibility of looking into a guardrail on South Patton. If you'll look what you have in your packet, we have solicited three quotes. Your first quote, they range anywhere from $16,750 to $15,931.25 to the lowest at $11,700. The council could, if you prefer, you could pay this out of Talville. The one thing to consider though in looking at this is this will only be the second guardrail that the town has inside our city limits. So if the council would like to move forward with the proposal, we certainly can. Or if you would like staff to look at maybe some alternative methods, uh, maybe some cones or something in that area to kind of deter people. Because it's just from my understanding from the letter council received, it's really just the bottom section there. Um, where some bathrooms are being constructed. But just wanted to report back to the board some options that you guys have and ask for some additional direction. <coughs> okay. The cones are those temporary cones? We could put temporary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we, I, I'm sorry, go ahead, Ms. Mayor. Uh, Nathaniel, did you, you want to speak to what, do we have any problems with uh, getting the guardrail in there before it, it's a drop-off. Um, the, the people that we had reached out to are the companies that install guardrail, and those were the quotes that I gave Ms. Woodard mm -hmm. um, to look at. It is going to be tight on that section. That was one of their concerns okay. that they did have. Um, it would, would somewhat uh, narrow that roadway down slightly, but okay. just because of the drop -off. That's the question I had. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Mayor, I feel like I've got some ownership in this because I really feel like, um, you know, given the kind of incidents that you have some record knowledge of now that there's been car rollovers right onto private property and, you know, I, I don't know that it was a great, you know, the stuff that's being constructed right up against it is done there legally. Uh, it, so those two things together, if you have a car roll off of that now, I would be very worried about liability. Um, it's, it's maintenance of a street, which you get no governmental immunity for. Uh, it's so without any question, there's, there's a possibility of liability and you have some notice about the condition there. Now, if there's some alternative that does as good a job as a guardrail, great. Yes, sir. I think the prudent way to go is to uh, have our public safety take a second look. It may be that the guardrail substantial guardrail needs to only be at the half of it with a wire or other type of a barrier a little less expensive but all in and whatever whatever with uh with public safeties given the advice if we can adjust down the scope go back to the same folks and leave it with the town manager then to make the decision as to to what extent the project might get altered presumably lower price and go ahead and then allow her to uh, choose how to do it. Mm -hmm. this, this, we got to do something, John, because we've talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, get it's not a high speed situation, so it doesn't need to be a full fledged, I mean, six by sixes with wire uh, reflectors. I think a public safety <coughs> could figure out. Fair enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To that end, okay, it's. Do you, you want authorization? So I, I make, the mo make the motion that we uh, take a second look at it, uh, but then whatever needs to be done is uh, financially, yeah. hopefully, more advantageous. Let's do it. It's, it's 335 feet, and just looking at the aerial photograph here, it could almost be cut in half. It could be. It uh, could just be. looking at, because that's just woods, and nothing is there, so... All right, so your motion is to just let staff take a second look at it. Yes, with okay. the hopes that maybe they can adjust parts of it so that it'll still be safe but won't have to have a guardrail from top to bottom. Okay. All right, Powell so Bill. second. I don't know. It, does it, would that matter about Pal Bill? I'm not sure why you were hesitant. No, though. sir, it, it wasn't because it's an already appropriated amount in your budget, so yes. we could certainly, I just wanted to brief you that that's something we could pay out of okay. And it's not coming up on now. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so second. 
I second. All in favor? Okay. Is there anything else I've skipped? I appreciate y'all paying attention and uh, catching me on that because I completely <coughs> overlooked it. All right, let's go around the table real quick like Mr. Kimsey. I don't have anything. I'd just like to thank everybody for coming out. Mr. McMahon? I would echo Adam. Thank Ms. you. Ms. McRae? Fine. Thank you. Ms. Mashburn? You sure? <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. I Mr. Collins. Things, but I will hmm. move to the <laughs> Well, let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I always do that, Bob. You set me up. <laughs> hey, you've never set me up. Hey? No. <laughs> okay, uh, Town of Franklin budget work session will be Monday, April the 15th, 5.30 in this room. Uh, town hall offices will be closed on Friday, April 19th in observance of Good Friday. The first Friday night hall movie night will be Friday, May the 3rd, 2019. And the movie will be Dr. Strangelove. <laughs> I just had to get an April Fool in there before it was over with, okay? All right, we have a motion to adjourn. All in favor? We're adjourned.